Hi, this is Lindsay Oden, Special Research Assistant at the Washington State Attorney General's Office, and this is your AGO Moment in History. In this series, our office will be releasing clips from our Oral History Project, an ongoing effort to collect and preserve the history of the Attorney General's Office as told by the people who have worked here over the years. In this episode, our current Attorney General Bob Ferguson interviews former Attorney General and U.S. Senator Slade Gordon. Senator Gordon served three terms as Attorney General of Washington State from 1969 to 1981. He was later elected to the U.S. Senate, where he served three terms from 1981 to 1987 and from 1989 to 2001. In this clip, Senator Gordon discusses the changes to the Attorney General's office during his tenure, especially the growth and increased responsibilities of the office. Under Senator Gordon, the Attorney General's office doubled in size, largely as a result of new responsibilities for consumer and environmental protection. Also in this clip, Senator Gordon recalls hiring Christine Gregoire, who went on to be Attorney General in her own right and then Governor of Washington State. Let's have a listen. In your, I think we referenced it earlier, when you start as Attorney General, I think you mentioned there were about 100 attorneys. Yeah. And by the end of 200. your 12, yeah, 200, 220, I think, uh, a lot of growth for a variety of reasons, uh, additional responsibilities. Um, I guess one thing I was curious about was, was there much change from your standpoint, additional responsibilities, uh, uh, different ways you chose to run the office or to interact with attorneys or professional staff? Was there any, that change was probably gradual over those 12 the state years. Was, the, the change was gradual <laughs> and it was in size, not in kind. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, the legislature passes new laws every every uh, every year or every other year, and new responsibilities. The state uh, the state bureaucracy grows. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, the world becomes more litigious. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, the, the the growth was gradual, but only in one direction. Right, in terms of growth, because I think and now we're at around 550 yeah. attorneys, so it's just it's only going. You're exactly right; it's only going one direction. So, so no, especially. But you're doing some. You're doing much, not very many of your people, but you're doing much more in criminal prosecutions. Well, we have. We certainly didn't even exist until Ken Eikenberry, of course, yeah. came along, and now we do, of course, have a criminal division. So you're yeah. right. Each hey, every so often, additional responsibilities come yeah. our way. We, we, protection we, is had, grown. we right. had no, no, none of that. None of that. One thing I did want to ask you. This is sort of jumping around a little bit, but I was curious about. The extent you can recall, sort of a typical day as Attorney General. Like I often think about how I'm allocating my time, right? How much my time is spent. I'm looking at briefs. I'm thinking well, about other cases. Well, I suppose more of one's time is spent in a car. It's right. <laughs> that's probably, that's <laughs> probably almost right. Almost any other thing. Yeah. You're, you're between Seattle and Olympia, or the, the, the rest of the state and mm -hmm. Olympia, and so it was very different. Uh, I think I probably averaged driving to say I lived in Olympia, mm -hmm. and, but I think I probably averaged coming to Seattle three days a week. Interesting. You know, okay. <clears throat> speech, something to do in the Seattle office with what was uh, going on here. Mm -hmm. Maybe just coming up to the airport to fly mm -hmm. to Spokane mm -hmm. or something of the sort. Mm -hmm. Olympia days you know, were spent in the office, which as I said was a little bit isolated mm -hmm. because it was in the temple mm -hmm. with just the other uh, uh, deputies there. Uh, I took the other, other than the Supreme Court, the only other way in which I really practiced law was that I took an intense interest in all attorneys general, attorney general's opinion. Uh, and Phil Austin, who was in charge of that, you know, would bring drafts and even propose finals to me. And, and I would often deal with them substantively. Okay. So you were very much engaged on the legal opinions, the briefing, the work was, yeah, yeah the work that was going on. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, I think one thing that John Hughes mentions in his book is that I think in your first term, he said that the uh, uh, moving to consumer protection for just a moment, one year, one of those divisions, uh, the number of consumer complaints tripled during your first term, I think, is a, is a statistic he puts in there. Um, I'm not sure how much you recall from that first term or, or that specifically, but I was just curious, you know what was driving that? Or was that a, was a priority of yours to go out and, and, and hear from folks in the community or from the division? I just was, that that jumped out at me that the, he made a point of mentioning that things really ramped up in those years from 68 to 72. And One of the things was <coughs> KVI mm -hmm. uh, and Jim French, mm -hmm. who I think may still be around, mm -hmm. uh, created a little radio drama called Con Man Out. <coughs> and which played three days a week, was I think about 90 seconds. 
and we'd have a brief little thing. Jim could act several people at the same time. Oh, really? And we'd run a brief little consumer complaint, and then at the end, I would come in as Attorney General and say, here's what we say about it, and here's how we settled it. And we did that the entire time I was Attorney General. No kidding. And it was on the radio, and it may have had something right. to do, I suspect, with the fact that people thought that they could they could come to us and, and get something happening. Sure. Uh, but in the general consumer area, in, say, drug price fixing and so on, I actually inherited a few cases that Shadow O'Connell had started mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we ended up settling. And I, it, with one or two exceptions, they probably got more publicity for the office than, uh, than almost mm -hmm. anything else. Uh, I do remember in consumer protection, we drove one fraudulent automobile dealer, a pretty big one, uh, to, I think from up in Lake City out of business, mm -hmm. and because he was very loud and because it lasted a long time, mm -hmm. uh, that created quite a bit of publicity for the office. Right. Interesting. So, uh, um, and during your time as Attorney General, uh, Chris Gregoire worked in the office, correct? Toward the end. Yes, toward the end. She, uh, uh, she, she was one of my last hires. And so, do, do you remember, uh, I don't suppose you remember meeting her for the first time, but just was curious, do you have any recollections of, uh, of Chris Gregoire I'm at that time? I'm not sure yeah. whether it's an actual uh, uh, remembrance or whether it's just she became governor and, <laughs> and, and so it yeah. sort of came back to me yeah. that, 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 yeah. that it, it might have been. But she was from Spokane, in Spokane and, and, uh, and that's where she worked. And she said she drove me around a couple of times Correct. and I have no reason to say that wasn't true. Correct. So, yeah, and I think that that's mentioned in the book as well. Yeah. So, but that was would have been one of your last hires as attorney. What a bit, it was either in the last or next to the last year I was attorney general. Interesting. Thanks for listening to this AGO moment in history. Be sure to like and subscribe to receive updates when we upload a new episode. On our next episode, Senator Gordon discusses the John E. Goldmark libel case, in which Senator Gordon testified on behalf of a colleague from the Washington House of Representatives in the midst of dirty, anti-communist campaign tactics. Thanks, and talk to you again soon.